Well, hello, everybody. Do you know who it is? It's Steph and Satani, the host of a comedy advice podcast. And I am so happy that you guys are all here. You all, we've just formed a tight little circle and we're all spiritually holding hands and kumbayaing, summoning this episode, which is about to transpire before your very ears. And I'm so excited, or maybe eyes too, if you're watching on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. But I'm so pumped to just have you guys. I hope you guys had a, a amazing Halloween. I know Halloween just ended, and it's it's now a ghost, ironically, you know. And so I had a great Halloween. I dressed up as a crazy cloud. I didn't speak like that though, because that sounds more like a very jovial clown. Oh, no, it kind of sounds like Pennywise. I just watched It, by the way, because my wife dressed up as female It. I dressed up as a scary-ass clown. A murderous clown. I mean, he had blood all over him, so I don't want... I, I feel like he needs a fair trial, but the blood stains, the demonic smile, and the butcher's axe that came included with the costume makes me feel like this clown was up to no good. I feel like he was cutting more than just honey smoked ham. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was cutting some honey smoked hunks and hunkettes, a murderous clown. And guess what? I ended up answering the door for trick or treaters like that. And I ended up scaring the <laughs> out of our, <laughs> out of our delivery driver. We forgot we ordered Chinese and the poor delivery guy jumped back like three feet. I could see the puddle of piss that was left from his trousers as it dripped onto our sidewalk and i'm so sorry ian if i ever see you again i apologize for my actions and i also apologize to the three-year-old girl that dressed up as princess jasmine for giving you nightmares for years to come anyway guys i am here to scare you with such delightful entertainment and that entertainment this week is mike b dapper he is an incredible guest and an incredible person. He actually started out in radio and he was on Kiz FM for many years. He talks about how he was able to let his light shine. And he has a great quote about shining light. If you guys hear it, comment in the comment section and be like, hey, got it. And first one wins a clown costume because I can't wear it anymore. The police are looking for a guy in the murderous clown costume. So there you go. And other than that, he's also a comedian. He's been doing comedy for a long time. And he's also a booker at the House of Comedy. And he gave Lamar and I a chance to do our show Trash or Treasure there. And I'm really lucky to have met him, to have spoken with him. He's a great guy. And speaking of Trash or Treasure in the House of Comedy, November 9th, guys. It's coming up. It's creeping on up, just like a murderous clown. <laughs> and it is coming up, and we're going to kill with laughter. And that's how it's going to go. It's going to be an amazing show. Link is in the show notes. And what else? Oh, I've got another show next week, uh, next Friday in Chandler. It's off the top, and it's going to be improv mania and it's actually at a place called improv mania also if you haven't yet please subscribe leave a review and follow me on instagram at s satani at a comedy advice podcast wherever and guys keep being you you guys are awesome thank you for all the love thank you for all the support thank you for listening to this it's been years years of my life have gone to making dumb clown jokes so i'm super happy that you guys are there listening just honking along with me, you know, pedaling along on those clown bicycles like a nice clown, an insane clown gang. I'm not going to go. No, no, I'm not going to say posse. Right? But I see P all over my sidewalk because I scared the poor delivery driver. And that is enough clowning around. I'm going to let you guys get to the episode. Here we go. I'm very new to stand up comedy in like i'm more well yeah i'm just new to comedy i guess a little newbie a little pup how still long been, how moist long been doing it been doing stand-up for about i don't know i think i've gotten up on stage less than 50 times for sure oh wow yeah yeah very new 
very new, but I've been doing the podcast for like four years. Okay. So that's not the same at all, but no. it's given me. <laughs> I did radio before comedy, so I know. I yeah. was going to say, man, I know up until like 2008, 2009, you were on Kiss FM. Mm-hmm. I did. I started in Kiss in, in uh, 2003, I believe. Okay. And, um, and man, I went to broadcasting school, right? One of those, one of those things you hear off the radio. Uh, come to this broadcasting school. We'll, you know, put you at the radio station. We'll teach you. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't know sh- sh- shit about radio. <laughs> right? I, I didn't. All I knew was I love Martin on the Martin Show. Right? Mm. And I was like, man, if I could sit up there and talk like that with a show, that would be the greatest job ever. <laughs> And that's what I thought radio was like. I've never really listened to local radio to be like, yeah. I want to be like that guy. That yeah. guy seems cool. Even when it was yeah. on, I never really listened to how they really do it. I might have caught like morning shows yeah. where you would have long talk breaks. Back in the day, morning shows had longer talk breaks, so it was easier to be like, oh, okay. They get to do it like kind of like Martin, but I would do it better. Right, mm, I see. So I, see. I heard that went and jumped into broadcasting school, a little seven month school. But it was funny right after I got out of broadcasting school, like not got out of, I was right. like graduated, and they were like supposed to set me up with a job. Uh, they were like, "Yeah, so where you want to go?" I was like, "I want to go to either Mega, Kiss FM, uh-huh. or Power. Those were like the three stations yeah. that I wanted to go to." And they like, I like, they were like, "Well, if you want to get on air." You're gonna have to go out of state, um, damn. Because they told me because I was black, and yeah, no, no, Russia. What? <laughs> they told what? Me, yeah, because I was black, and there weren't a lot of black DJs on air out here, right? You okay. probably had like at the time you had J Times Three, Super Snake, um, Cedric Zabalos, um, mm-hmm. Sugar Bear. There was there was like oh, yeah, maybe yeah. four black dj so they were like you'd have to go to a smaller market and i had just this is mind you i had just had a son uh damn dude yeah so i was young i was was that's crazy i was getting in really young it's pretty interesting about the diversity too because i just went over to the power 98 studios and i had uh, dana cortez and dj automatic on okay and she was the she's the first latina american woman to have a nationally syndicated show and she's just like it's basically white dudes yeah uh, it's like still to this yeah. day which is kind of yeah. crazy to me yeah and it was that's probably re- part of the reasons why you know i got out of radio and went to comedy but Damn. um you know just getting into radio i did kiss fm probably like for i i and they were right like they were right there i didn't get into radio like so like they told me i wouldn't be able to get in out here. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to stay out here. I just had a son. I went and right. applied at all the radio stations, Mega Kiss. I put in all kind of applications. And mm-hmm. no one ever called me back, right? And I told them I had graduated from the broadcasting school that you guys <laughs> are promoting on the radio. Like, how do you not hire me? Like, what is this <laughs> false advertisement? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that sucks. You know, that sucks. You're just waiting to hear a call and you listen to the radio and they're like, yeah. join the broadcasting school. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, this is bull. Oh, so man. I end up going to a club at in Scottsdale and I ran into Super Snake who was on uh, afternoons, you know, um, yeah. and was on here for years and years, years, years. And he was like, yo, I told him I graduated. You know, with nobody hollering at me. He was like, man, just put my name on the application. I went and did another application the next day, put his name on it, and they called me back like two days later, right? Dang. Right. Wait, so you, you met Super Snake at a club? At a club. And so were you guys doing that thing where the music's really loud and you're just yelling in his ear? Like, I, well, you know, dude. It, it was it was real whack in there, so no one had to yell. It was probably like <laughs> like ten people in there. Oh shit! So we were able to uh, just able to have a good a regular conversation because he ain't had shit to do. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so I told him he was like, oh, you know, and then it led to me nice. getting on air. And was funny <laughs> when I had got there because when you started radio back in like oh three, like it was like you was a remote tech, and you oh, would have yeah. yeah, you'd have to you know, take the equipment out to a, an event. Like, say you were at the the mall that day 
or at, at the Sprint store and the DJ would come out and you'd have to set up the tent, set up the deep, the speakers, put up the generator and, you know, it'd be hot out there. And then the DJ pull up and they do their little call in. Yeah, come out here to Sprint. I'm be giving away telephones for about two hours. And then they do like two phone calls and then they leave and they get like all kind of money. It was like, oh, my man, God, that's what I want to get to. But you'd have to do that. You'd be in grind work. So I yeah. started doing that and I remember doing it for like a month. And I saw Super Snake in the uh, in the studio. He had walked by. I just got through doing some real grunt, grunt work. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> he walks by. I'm like, all right. He goes and he's in the studio. He's, you know, doing his show. Yeah. And I go in there and I'm like, hey, Snake, you know, because it's off air. He, he was like, I was like, can I just sit in here one time and just watch? I won't say anything. I just, because, you know, I want to do this and everything. And he was like, took his headphones off. He looked at me. Nah, and then put his headphones <laughs> right back on and went back to doing his show. And I was like, damn, like, okay, all right, all right, okay. Oh, shit. I wonder, well, I wonder, that's crazy, man. Well, I guess the snake but, but only the, slithers so far on but, the But I had people tree. like Kid and Ruben, right, who uh -huh. were fixtures out here, were on morning shows, and they appreciated my hard work, you know. And they were like, you should come and do hang out with the morning show. And actually, they started me doing van hits in the morning where I would drive around in the van. And I tell people, yo, I'm out here on 75th Avenue in Glendale. If you come out here, I got tickets to see, you know, uh, uh, Usher and t coming to town. Right. And people yeah. would drive yeah. out there. And that was like my my thing. But I'd be, you know, cool with my shit. And they were like, you know what? You should come and hang out in the morning, you know, with us in the sh after you get off from doing the van. So I would come in there. And then it would liven up the studio. Everybody would be like, oh, it's a good vibe. So then they had me in there on the morning show. And I had only been in radio maybe a year and a half. Now, mind you, they had told me I would have to go 10 years before I would be able to get back into a major market like this. Oh. And, and so, you know, I was like already in there. And then like Hurricane Katrina happened and crazy kid had said some crazy shit. And yeah. then they had stopped the show, and then it was like, I had went to Mega, and then I was like at Mega for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. But then On air, or were you? I was on, I actually, it's funny too, because uh, my guy Cedric Sabalos was doing Middays, right? Yeah. He said, shout out to him, he just got out the ICU um, battling COVID, former, Damn, uh, former slam dunk champion for the Phoenix Suns, Cedric Sabalos. Um Damn. He was doing middays at Mega, right? This mm -hmm. is an old school station. He was so cool. Like, yeah. he was so cool to me. Like, he was one of those people, because I had never had my own show. And he would do some cool shit. Like, I, I was just be coming in from doing a remote, right? And they he would be he be like, oh, come on into the studio. Because I learned after that Super Snake shit, you don't just walk into the studio for, and, and, and ask. But said be cool. He'd be like, come on in the studio. And he'd just be in there and he, we'd be chatting for like a minute. He'd be like, you hungry? I'd be like, I, I could eat, but I was broke as shit at the time, right? Right, right. You know, Damn. Uh, you know, child support was kicking my ass, right? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'll wait till I get home, though. You know, got some uh -huh. rice and beans. <laughs> and I, but you don't need to know that. <laughs> and, but he'd be like, he would be cool. He'd be like, oh, man, I'm about to go grab some Italian food. This is in the middle of the day during the midday show that he's doing he's like i'm about to go grab some italian food you want some i'm like yeah i like but who gonna run the like did you already you know voice record this he's like nah man you do it damn i like man you know that these people don't know that i, I they they haven't okay does he like you be good don't worry about it and i was scared as shit i got on that was the first time i ever got on by myself because says sabalos let me just you know, rock out on his show, and I was so scared, and I was messing up. I was like, "I'll make a one hundred four three Arizona old school <laughs> station." Uh, uh, Janet Jackson coming up. Uh, stay fair. I, I hit the button. You know, I, I just got out because I was uh, I was so nervous. And he came in. He was cool. He was laughing. They ended up giving me a show. Right. My very first show. Damn. Was that the audition? Were they? Just, was it? Planned? I don't know if it was the audition, but they didn't fire me whether he said <laughs> hey hey that's on me y'all relax <laughs> he'll get his shit together trust me you know whether he said that or not uh-huh uh-huh he 
he was it was cool, right? And yeah. I end up getting a show like The Quiet Storm, right? The Quiet Storm. It was at midnight because they didn't trust me on no regular <laughs> okay. hour shit to be fucking up right in the middle of the show. I'm like, oh my god, who, <laughs> who, who did this, right? So, <laughs> how I, long did you do that for? I the like. It wasn't that long. Like the first show, it was funny because the first show I did was at midnight, right? Okay. And and I told you I was a huge yeah. fan of the Martin show. Yeah. And when Martin had took over, was doing late nights on one episode, he was actually doing the Quiet Storm, right? Mm. So I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna do it like Martin. Martin had candles and everything, and he had the lights off. But I was new, so I had a, a script written out, right? That I was okay. gonna say the because you got to read and everything, your script and everything. Yeah. And I was like, okay, but I'm gonna do it like Martin. And then right when I, but I was also sick, and I had my hoodie on. And I was kind of sweating. And right before I got ready to do my show, start my show, it's midnight. Cedric Sabalos walks into the studio and he's like, hey, dog, good luck tonight, man. And I'm like, what are you doing here? What are you doing? Because there's nobody <laughs> else in the studio, right? <laughs> and he comes in and he says, hey, man, good luck tonight. And I was like, man, man, that felt so good. But then I was still super nervous. And then when I hit on air to turn, you know, to start yeah. the show, I couldn't read my script because it was too dark and the candle wasn't bright enough. So I was just fumbling through it and it was oh, like the no. worst break. And like, that's how it started. And I was so trash. That's why when I started doing comedy, I was so comfortable with not being good because I remember how trash I was that first break in radio. Yeah. And yeah. then I was like, to go from where I was then to like later on, because I had a show, man. After a while, I was living at the radio station. I was on all weekend on two different stations. You know, I was just on Mega 104.3 and on the beat. I would go from back and forth. And, you know, my stuff was crisp, but the first time it was, but that's because I had a program director that would do air checks with me every week and be like, yo, why'd you say that? That was terrible. Why do you keep saying that? That's terrible. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And you learn by somebody, you know, really critiquing, like, why are you saying that so much? Why is, why are you so repetitive with that? You know, you don't have to say all that to get to that. You could have hmm. easily just said that. That's why when I get into comedy, you, you cut down your jokes and you're funny because you're like, you know, all that meat, you get to the meat of the joke and you don't have to say all those extra descriptive words because you already know what you need to say. And radio I teach you that because you're like, hey, I got a break, one break. Mega 104.3, Arizona's old school. Janet Jackson coming up, but we got tickets to go see uh, Luther Vandross uh, to, at the state, state fair. You got to say all that, but they got a large script. There's a bunch of stuff in there with not, with with uh, phone numbers and websites, but mm -hmm. you got to pick what you want to say, and you got to get the meat, and you got to make it sound conversational without being like, hey, I'm running through this, and I'm super nervous and everything. When you get good and comfortable, gotcha. it sounds like a conversation. Hmm. you know that's pretty cool man and I, and first off i don't even think we introduced ourselves so uh, you know that i didn't even know we was talking at, until like we because at first we were just chopping it up and then you hit the mic on me and i'm like <laughs> I'm you could have set me up i'm like and you know my mistress right she uh, said I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna make a joke to say i should probably start recording now but uh no we've been this has been a hot mic and it's been a hot conversation here with mike b dapper everybody and this is a comedy advice podcast with your host steph and satani and it's just been a jolly good time hearing about you hearing about your radio time and man you have just had cedric savalos a, a little shoulder angel if yeah. you will i wish i had a cedric savalos i feel like we all need that but i feel like that was a great I feel like I have a super snake on my shoulder, mm -hmm. um, but you know, we need that Cedric, mm -hmm. but it's super cool to hear that you had, I don't know if he was a mentor, but he was just somebody that kind of was pushing for you, gave some gentle nudges, and he, I felt like he gave you opportunities. He taught me a valuable lesson, and 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 there was a couple of others, whether it was Kid and Ruben, that taught yeah. me a valuable lesson in, in this business, in this entertainment business, that never be intimidated by someone else's shine. Like sometimes people will see your glow and they'll be like, oh no, they're going to like you more than they like me. And I'm not ready to give up what little shine that I have. 
Yeah. And they'll be like, I don't want to help you shine. I'm not, I'm going to stand in your way. Seb was like, man, I can see that that boy can shine. He just needs some fine tuning or whatever, but I can see it. And whether or not they're like, hey, man, he's really good. Let's get him up out of here. And you get the, the new kid in here with the smart, that we don't have to pay as much. Whether he was like, he could have been like, yeah, I don't want that to happen. I, I yeah. can fear that. Yeah. But there's people that are like, where, whether I felt like, Snake felt, felt, you know, felt that like, nah, man, I'm not about to help you shine, you know. Yeah. But it, with him, I realized it was more of a, I need to see if you really care about this. If you're gonna, there's a lot of people mm. that get in this that want to be on air, but they're out of here in no, you know, no time because they don't get what they want instantly, and they be like, man, I don't want to work these remotes and stuff like that. And then after a time, he was like, you on your grind, and he warms up. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. And it seems like you have chosen the path of jobs that are insanely hard to get ahead in. Radio, it seems like you got to put in your time to be able to get even on air and then beyond that, getting a good spot. And then stand-up comedy, which I heard you tried after. And uh, you've been doing it for how long was it? Uh, I started when I, my, my Jesus year, so 33. 12? Yeah, I started uh, at 30, uh, 33. I'm 42 now, so nine years. Dude, holy shit. Wow. I, congratulations, by Thank the way. You. you look younger than I. I'm in my Jesus year right now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You're looking I'm, it, bro. I'm, I'm living yeah, it. You're yeah. Like, yeah, you're showing it. You're showing <laughs> it, brother. You're showing it. Is it I'm getting it you so are much. embracing it. Uh, <laughs> either that or a Bee Gees, uh, you know, vibe going. And I dig it, man. I dig it. I mean, it's I, I used to wear a high and tight, but I thought, you know what? If uh, Jesus just let it flow, I will too. Hey, it's man. all good. Why it's you all can. love. Why you can. So, I don't know. But anyway, the... The, I was going to ask you too, the moniker, Mike B. Dapper, which is fabulous, by the Thank way. You. Fabulous. Because you. You, you are dapper, Thank um, you. I must say. And I'm for sure. all of you watching, for all of you listening that can't see how dapper Mike B., he's very dapper. He's got a cool hat that I could never wear because my head is so gigantic. Your glasses have that cool rim. It's like if. Steve Urkel turned to Stefan. <laughs> yeah, it is. There it is. And, <laughs> and I, I don't even know what those straps are. This is supporting, a, but they look badass. They're like holsters. It's, it's it, it look it's, it look it's a shoulder holster, and Damn. it's it it holds my phone on one side, and the other side is a pouch. I keep my keys, my earbuds. I got some weed in there, um, <laughs> and, so, and a lighter. And, the essentials, right? Yeah, and it, it the way it's marketed on Etsy is completely whack. So if you go there, if you ever see me, and you'd be like, "Man, I want that," you'll never see it. If you go looking on Etsy, because the way they market it yeah. is reversed, and it and these pouches sit right here. So if I turn, I turned it upside down and wore it upside down. Oh, okay. And 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 and, and, and swagged it out. You see, that's the difference between you and me, because I would have worn it exactly the, the goofy way. You. I'm like the Steve, and you're like Stefan. Yeah, in this case, I jumped in that machine. Yeah. Damn, dude. You All have right. to embrace it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you're Mike B. Dapper and I would be Stefan Stefan Slobberino or something like that. I don't know. But it's uh it's really cool to see. I don't think I've seen you perform stand up comedy, but you I think was it post pandemic? Like well, right as the pandemic you started, you started what have you heard? What have you heard about all me? great things? Yeah. All great things. Seriously, like even the bad stuff. Good stuff, bad stuff. What have you heard? No, I haven't so I'm not What made you want to sit down and talk to me? So, well, <laughs> first, first, I should say you gave me and Lamar the opportunity to do a show at the House of Comedy, which you're a booker at, mm -hmm. Trash or Treasure, mm -hmm. which um, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest with you. Me neither. <laughs> when Lamar came to you with the idea, what were you thinking? Were you like, oh, shit? Nah, you know what? I'm always open for new ideas. You okay. know, even if I don't see the vision with sure. it. I'm always willing to give it a chance, especially if I know the person uh, is is going to give their all for it, mm. right? Because that's all I'm at. I'm a I'm all about trying. I'm yeah. not. I'm, yeah. It. I never get mad or upset with people where if there's nobody at the show, I do get upset if they never even tried to promote the show. I do get because that's just trying. That's just a simple boop. That's just a you know. It's not nothing serious. It's nothing. It's just a. It's not even a real, it boggles my mind what people choose to post and which people choose not to post. Yeah. You know, yeah. it always boggles my mind, like, 
how people choose to promote certain things, but they choose not to promote other things. And it's like, That's this is a business in every aspect, right? And I think the people who understand that the fastest survive in it the longest, you yeah. know? And the yeah. people who don't understand that fizzle out. I've When I got into this, I was a single man, you know, out there playing the game, playing the field. It was nice in the field, you know. And along that way, I got married. I had two kids, but I never stopped the hustle, you yeah. know, of the, of yeah. the business. There's people that, that, that fizzle out. They, they start, start telling con- jokes, and then the next thing you know, they're, they got a girlfriend, and you never see them on stage again. You mm. know? Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, it was like the stage is what they needed to be able to get the attention, to get the, what they really wanted was love, and it wasn't really the stage. Oh, that's true. That's true. And that was just how they were able to get it. And then they break up, and what happens? They're right back right at the, back stage. the stage. And like, oh, yeah, I'm going to try this comedy thing out again. You know, it's like, you know what? If you had never stopped, you know, and just worked <laughs> through the heartache, <laughs> you know. That's so true. I feel <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right, man. And I feel that it's with so many things. Sometimes instead of the stage, it's a friend or, mm-hmm. or it's uh, working out or mm-hmm. it's eating healthy or yep. what, what have you. And there are these things, and I feel like people – they when they have a major change in their life or even a minor one mm-hmm. then their habits are not solidified enough to be able to stay in place so then they lose those habits yep. the healthy ones yeah and so they stop they stop working out they stop promoting or they stop going on stage and going to open mics they stop believing in themselves it's a grind and and i learned just like i i love radio because i left radio to do comedy and I left comedy, I left radio because radio was a dying business as far as if you want to be able to be a big name in radio, yeah, you weren't going to be making any money, you know? And if you were a big name in radio, in radio, it's because you had some other clout that you came to radio with. So if the mm. Steve Harvey's want to do a radio show or the Cedric the Entertainers or all those people, the Ricky Smiley's had all these, the Jamie Foxx's had radio shows. And they were getting paid good money to have these radio shows. And it was because they were funny. They people knew them. They were on stage and, yep. and they can go to the table with with some bargaining chips. Yep. You know? Where, you know, if you want that, so if you want it to be able to be make money there, then sometimes you gotta take steps backwards to move forwards. And comedy was like, Hey, all right, well, let's go make a name so that we can go back here to the negotiation table with some bargain chips instead of being like, Hey guys, I think I'll be really good. Oh, and they're like, get out of here. What a good strategy. Because I feel it, the same thing goes with podcasting, too. It seems like the people that are most successful are the ones that are already famous for something. And so mm-hmm. it's a real grind if you're just trying to make a name for yourself. I mean, like, hey, guys, I'm funny. So they can make huge money off sponsorships and deals. Meanwhile, I'm sponsoring Manscaped, cutting the shit out of my balls, mm-hmm. just being like, yeah, it really works, guys. Lying to myself, lying to my listeners. But, you know, if you want 20% off manscaped.com slash ACAP. <laughs> but, uh, you know, <laughs> just kidding. Love you, Manscaped. But... Hey, like, yeah. I'm going to need some of that money, though. We love you, too, though. <laughs> we love you, too, though. But we're going to need some of that money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It's, it's a fucking grind. But, dude, I feel... Yeah, touching on the point of, of being a booker, too... And that being my first show Mm -hmm. where I was booking comics to the point you made about, and I think you, I saw you posted on Facebook too, where it was like, it takes a second to post something like a flyer. If I don't see you posting, I'm probably not going to book you. Well, it was more, I said, when people ask to be on my shows, because I'll, yes, that's it. I'm sorry. I'll have a show and you know, it'll be a lot of people there, you know, if I'm lucky, but the last one, there was a lot of people there. And people nice. will see, look at that, and the comics will be like, ooh, I want to be on that show. Mm. Ooh, I want to be on that show. And I'm like, I want people to want to be on my show. Yeah. But I want people who actually want to be on my show. I don't want it to be a, in this game, in this game, it's all about you really need to understand what can I do to help you? And what can you do to help me? How can I make someone else look good? That's all it's about. How can I make somebody else look good? Because me making somebody above me look good makes me look good, period. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if 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 I'm having successful shows, some comics, if they'll be like, I want to be on your show. I'll go instantly look at their page, right? 
I'll be like, okay, look at their Instagram page, look at their Facebook page, look at their Twitter. I'm like, mm, all right, well, I, how many shows have you done in the past month? Okay, you're not really all that active. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. I don't see no shows. Then I'll be like, uh, well, okay, here's one show that you did. I mean, let me see how many times you, you promoted this show. Okay. Huh. Only promoted it once, huh? Okay. So what value do you have to me? You know, like yeah. I don't know yeah. I don't know you on stage. I don't know what, what you do. I don't know you to be like a super funny person. Mm -hmm. So if you're not super funny and you're not really trying to bring nobody, what value are you? You know? And I think comics don't understand that you have to understand where you are in the game at that moment. If you can sit up there, if you just get start doing comedy and you want to be able to do bigger venues and you want to be able to practice in front of bigger crowds yeah. and stuff like that, you need to be like, okay, well, to be able to grow and them want to ha let me grow, then mm -hmm. what can I do? I need to bring people. Yeah. Because if I walk in here and be like, yeah, these 30 people came here to see me perform. Can I get five minutes? Yeah, I think we can accommodate that. You know, I think we can accommodate that. Yeah, yeah, These 50 yeah. people, they want to see me perform. Can can I can I get some stage time? Yeah, I think we can accommodate that, you know, because they're yeah. like, oh, and people are going to be like, who brought all these people? And then other uh, produ uh, promoters and bookers around, they're going to be like, who brought all them people to that show? I want to get them, you know, come over here, because they, they, they want seat fillers. But if you're smart, while they're using you, you're using them for that stage time to be able to get better and be able to perform on those big stages and be able to say, hey, look, I'm I'm getting better in front of bigger crowds. But that takes a lot of work and a lot of comics ain't really trying to put down that work. And, and they're not at that level. They want to grow and they want to grow on bigger stages, but they're not ready to grow on bigger stages. Right. You know, right. right. I performed. And that in my nine years of performing thousands of shows. Right, thousands of shows. Yeah, every week, show after show after show after show. So it's like, if you're not willing to sit up there and grind out to be able to get your stuff, where it's like, okay, you know, I'm I'm comfortable in all situations. I can oh, all black crowd because I it's 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 different. You have to be able to do a lot of different things and be comfortable in a lot of elements if you really want to be good at. You can find your niche and just be like, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. everybody can have like this is my, what I do this is my niche I have a certain crowd they love me and that will make you a lot of money right yeah and then there's some people that are greedy that's like I want everybody to love me not everybody's gonna love you per se but you can you want you can want to be able to be like how we started off I don't I don't want to just be like yeah I, I entertain black folks you know or I entertain you know white folks I want to be able to be like I entertain everybody everybody yeah. whether yeah. it's black white gay everybody and if right. i don't know how to do that i want to work on being able to do that and figure out how i can do be able to do that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so to that point i mean let me just swallow all that wisdom that you just poured in my mouth and then ask the question yeah mm, delicious tea <laughs> and uh I'll, I'll leave that to the imagination for all the listeners but i think to the point of for specific audiences what do you what did you think about when you first started trying to cater to different ones? Because I think if the type of comedian that I would want to be mm -hmm. is also the general practitioner where it's it's um, I'm not specialized in some certain niche because I think that sure, like you said, you could make a lot of money, but I think that'll be really hard, mm -hmm. especially from the ground up where it's like, okay, well, I only I can only entertain white crowds. And then it's like, well, that's very, that's, maybe that's too but specific. But not everybody likes Let's hard. You know, but not yeah. everybody likes hard. Like. Good point. Good point. Not a, like, I've seen a lot of white comics go in front of all black comics, uh, all black audiences and drown, right? Yeah. Just drown. Because yeah. it's different. It's different. You know, it's yeah. different. Yeah. You know, it's like you're out of your element. You know, mm -hmm. you're out of your, your target audience. And it's like, uh. But then I've seen, you know white comments go in all black rooms and murder those rooms right yeah you know and then i've also seen white comments that are like that's just their target audience those black rooms you know and they have a hard time moving into white rooms so when i started i didn't want to start off where i felt like i would be more comfortable in black rooms i started off in white rooms and stand up scottsdale mm. you know stand up scottsdale 
you know, uh, wealthy white folks. I'm like, you know what? If I can figure them out, I think it'll be a lot easier to start working my way down. Mm. And once you kind of figure out making people who don't know shit about you understand you and laugh, it, it's it's a science. It's a science. Yeah. That I don't think a lot of comics really sit there and try to pay attention to. Yeah. I see it as a, a lot of other people have used this metaphor, but like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And I feel th the different crowds is the full puzzle, but some people are like, well, I just want to put the mountain together in this scene. So, and they just focus on a specific crowd. But I think it's important to focus on all because that way, because you could, you could compare it to even places you perform stand up. You know, there's mm -hmm. the comedy club, then there's a bar mm -hmm. <laughs> where people are talking over you. There's but that outside. Are, and I tell people those bars, those bars are where you need to start sharpening your knives at because yeah. those bars, those are those are the true tellers of are you good? Because if you pay attention, they don't the people who are going to a place to a venue that have absolutely no clue that comedy is going to be happening there yeah. and they're going there to pick up women and, and socialize and have a good time whatever and all of a sudden the comedy show is you know forced upon they lap and they're like you know and they're like fuck that dude on stage i'm trying to get some so anyway sweetheart <laughs> you know and they're they're having their conversation if you can get on stage and get them to turn around and be like hey what, what what's he what did he just say and just stop, man, that used to be gold. That used to be gold for me. Like, there's no greater feeling than turning a room that didn't give a shit about the comic before because they tuned them out. To stop and pay attention for your... And then once you get off, get back to chattering and having a good time, that is like the win for the night. That's like, that's the, that's the win, you know? And you once you can do that, and you could turn a bar that has no intention of watching comedy into watching you, when you actually get in front of people who are coming to see you perform or see comedy, it is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Like I already have your attention. I had to work to get their attention. I had to say some outlandish to get them to sit up there and be like, wait, what did he just say? <laughs> can you elaborate on what you just said? Yeah, I can. Now that I got your attention. And that silence that you get when they're just nothing but chatter and then all of a sudden it's just silent you soak that in for a second like man i got him that's okay let's go you that's know so good yeah it's big it's like uh you know you learn how to hike but you start off in the bars like you start off without shoes and then you're like oh with boots this is not so bad but you mm -hmm. kind of train yourself for the worst scenario and then uh yeah you kind of just build that up so that's great it's an art and it's it, it, you know i la i love it i i think coming from a radio background to it was helpful but it's literally and i tell people comedy in 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 this scene because people are like cutthroat as a booker and a promoter i don't have any of those things i book people i don't even like you know there's a but there has to be a respect but i don't have to like you I don't yeah. have to like you, but but if you're good at what you do, that it's whatever. You know, you can perform whatever. I try to book everybody because I don't always feel like like I have my own. I'm a comic. I just happen to be the booker. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because I just happen to be good at putting shows together. You know, it's yeah. a science. It's a science to that too. No, it really is. It's a it science really to is. that too. Um, but. I'm a comic first and I understand what it feels like to be a comedian, right? So I, I know when I'm at the club because they don't pay me to go to the club on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and go to your show mm -hmm. and go, they pay me to put together lineups. I can do that from the house, but I'm a comic and I know what it feels like to want to go to a club and the booker see you and be like, oh, that guy is funny and I can get you some stage time because there's actually somebody there watching. Yeah. So I know with how important that is. And I try to do that, you know, 
and that's great, man. I I am gonna be honest. I gushed when I saw you there. I was like, I didn't know if you were. Well, gonna I had be to there see if the shit was gonna be trash. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And it, it turns tragic. out it was trash. It was trash. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> turns out I was like, I was skeptic. I was on the line, like I don't know, <laughs> but it was entertaining. Oh, good. I'm glad, man. It was entertaining, and I always tell comics, man, look. You are down because you didn't get as many laughs as that last person, but it ain't always about laughs. And it was crazy because some uh, Howard Hughes said this, a uh, local promoter back in the day or whatever, mm-hmm. said this shit. But he was serious because he was, you know, not telling funny jokes. But <laughs> 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 it was, it was, it was true because you don't have to be the funniest. You, it, it's about entertainment. So if I go up there and I tell you a story that's so fascinating that you're like, man, that was a very riveting story. I did not know it was on some Forrest Gump shit. Like, I never wanted that story to end. Like, can you tell me another (laughs) one of those? (laughs) If you can give those kind of stories, people will be like, that guy's very entertaining. I I would go watch him again on some storytelling shit. And people will be like, yeah, I probably only laughed maybe three times, but I... I was watching him the whole time. And those stories were riveting. I can't believe he, you know, he lived that life and or he knew those people. Or yeah, that's totally true. I had the pleasure of speaking with Chris Gethard, mm-hmm. uh, and he was like, he is phenomenal at telling stories. And he talked about the trouble he had where he was honing his skills at first because he was big into improv, mm-hmm. and then he started doing stand up. And because he knew folks, I mean, this was like 2009, 2008, so they weren't as big as before, but uh, John Mulaney and uh, Nick Kroll would put him on his shows and, and, and on their shows and he'd be on these shows and then he'd bomb. Yeah. But then he got better at telling his stories, making them more captivating, keeping mm-hmm. people interested. And then he'd also get better at putting in the punchlines. Mm-hmm. So people were interested. It wasn't laughs per minute, the highest, but mm-hmm. it was, oh man, I'm interested in this. And you so. got to be comfortable in that lane, too, because sometimes there's so many comedies like karate. There are so many styles, right? There are so many styles. And there's styles that are just not even, people don't even know they've been created, at, you know, just, but you have to be comfortable in that style. And yeah. some of those styles won't make for a contest, right? Yeah, some yeah, true. Some of those true. styles will true. never make for a contest. If you're a storyteller, it don't make for contests. Those boom, boom, boom guys are going to get it because people are going to be counting last by a minute. Doesn't yeah. mean you're not funny. It doesn't yeah. mean you're not entertaining. It just means that you're not going to win a contest. Okay, <laughs> I know. Okay, it's just you're you're a taekwondo joke kind of guy. You're not the uh, it, you joke know, jitsu. But here's you know? the thing: it's sort of like running, right? Some when you a lot of people could just spit a lot of jokes. Ba 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 ba. Some people just like, yo, I tell stories that just happen to be funny. I'm, you know, I'm clever with my fun, you know, the way I tell the story, the way I, I articulate it. And they can do that for a longer period where sometimes a crowd gets worn out by boom, 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 boom. If you're not really boom, 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 boom. So it's like, especially if they can see things coming, a crowd is very like, I they want it's like a magic show when you're on stage. Right. Right. They oh, yeah. want to be tricked. They don't want to see the shit coming. You know, they want, Whoa, I didn't. Yeah, that's funny. I didn't see that joke coming. Like yeah. that's how they want to feel. So as a comic it's your job, to, you know, take them down twists and turns. And then all of a sudden be like, boom, that's how I do it with my wife as well. Yeah, she I, doesn't see it. I feel you, brother. <laughs> I feel you. Oh, man. Well, Mike, it's been a pleasure so far having you on the show. We're going to take a, a hard left and get into some advice, okay. that, some questions from the Reddit advice column that I have found or fans have sent in, and we're going to answer them. Okay. I think my computer fell asleep, so I'm going to have to wake it up real quick, and then we'll get into them because I don't have a sophisticated setup where I can actually – do something oh there we go perfect we've got the little agenda um maybe i can just inject a little ad about manscaped here and how good it is and how my balls are not bloody because of their technology but we're going to get into a quote okay this quote um i like inspirational quotes they help me when i'm feeling down and so i've got one here that i've prepared but i like to ask my guests okay if they have any quotes in their back pocket or 
shoulder satchel <laughs> or or yeah. any areas really are you a quote guy mike or i you... am a quote guy um nice. um man that's funny a lot of my quotes involve monkeys <laughs> <laughs> when i start thinking about like man you know one monkey don't stop no show <laughs> and, and, and then i would always say you give a monkey a gun, you don't blame the monkey if the monkey shoots himself. <laughs> oh, hey, that's true. That's damn good. Those are like solid monkey. Qu- you should have a book of, of monkey quotes. A monkey quote. If I didn't think it'd be so damn racist to put out a book <laughs> oh, no. of monkey quotes, <laughs> I would do it. Sounds like a market that needs to be tapped off. But <laughs> I didn't think that one through. Yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> We can't, certain things as black people, we just can't appreciate because of white folks. And it's like, damn it. Like, I'm from the Congo. I was born in the Congo. I would love to get a gorilla ca- tattoo, you know? And I'm like, why does Conor McGregor get to have that whack ass co- uh, gorilla tattoo? And I would love to have a gorilla tattoo, but every racist in this country would just be so comfortable. Like, I knew it. Of course. Of course you do. Of oh, course you do. Oh. I'm like, I love the gorillas in the Congo, and I believe in saving them. How about that? Oh, another good quote. Yeah. Is that where the monkey quotes stemmed from? Uh, hey, the love of the gorilla is a very powerful, loving animal. Very powerful. Very loving. He's got... Very family oriented. Just... Oh, okay. Why, yeah. Oh, you that's know, you can't, got... you can't kill an animal that believes in family. That's, that's, that's stupid. Like... That's very true, cause deer they don't believe in family. Uh, not they, no, actually, actually they do. Like I go to the zoo and they are all congregated together. Every when, well, I haven't got. I'm seasonal, so when it cools off, I have a Fair. season pass, yeah. and I'm there like literally four times out the week. Damn. Okay. Yeah, I take my kids. Oh, you know, nice. Yeah. Uh, I thought you just went by yourself, got really high, and were like, "Well, you know, that's good. That's a family animal. It's good exercise and and a a great morning jog. If you have a want to get a zoo pass, uh, you should always think about it. It pays itself off. Go to phoenixzoo.org/acap for twenty percent off." Wildlife Zoo, because uh, we out there on the west side. Uh, oh, 303. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to that one. Uh, you, it... it's, it's, it's by far the best zoo in the, uh, in, our, in the valley. Yeah, because it's a lot bigger. Okay. They're consistently adding things on. Like okay. consistently adding things on. Um, you and only can... family animals, it uh, seems. Well, no, it's so, um, they, they, like I said, they always have new things. Like they okay. always have new animals. They always have babies. I was supposed to be able to go and um, play with the uh, baby jaguars and the baby lion clubs because, like, I'm what? VIP. Yeah, I'm VIP over there. But my wife is also VIP too because she works for the city of Glendale. Okay. For, for the she's the uh, public information officer. Okay. Right? So they were gonna uh, let us. This is right right before COVID started, and we were supposed to go over there and play with the cubs. We were gonna bring the kids and play with the lion babies and everything, and. Then, oh. And then it got shut down and everything. And I was like, oh. Oh, damn. I know. Damn. I know. Well, that's a bummer. So have they, they're opening back up, though, Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. Um, we're still supposed the to. The animals I don't are just know. wearing masks. I, I got to wait. I got to see if they have any cubs in there. But when it cools off, we're supposed to go. You don't want to play with the adults. No, man. You see some see you see some amazing especially if you get a zoo pass you see some amazing things on a, on a daily. You can't just go to the zoo once and be like, yeah, it was boring because you won't see everything. You go there at Zoo Pass and Gilder in the morning when the animals are lively. My daughter has a a, a pet tiger named Peppermint. Yeah, and that like they play together, like they play together, and the tiger responds. It'll come to me. Like I I know it sounds crazy, but if you go to my Instagram, Mike B Dapper, you'll see. Damn. My daughter playing with uh, the tiger Peppermint. You'll see her on a couple occasions, and they she'll come. She'll. It's funny because I love stealing peppermint from white people too. Like, <laughs> there's two sides of the exhibit, right? There's one side, and we'll go. I'll be on the other side, and she'll be laying there, right? And you can see her from three different angles, from three different uh, viewpoints. Yeah, yeah. And I love when people are looking at her, and I yell her name out, or my daughter. When my daughter yells her name out, oh, she just comes trotting, right? She comes trotting across no the thing, way. and then we'll just run, do a back and forth run, and she'll just play you know tag like basically tag it's it's 
if I didn't think that she would maul her to death, I would let them go and play together. But I think at some point she's like, <laughs> you know what, this was fun and shit, but I'm a tiger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh. I'm actually hunting them down right now. I'm to get them. I tricked you these months of playing with you. <laughs> oh, man. The grift from Peppermint. That is crazy. <laughs> That's cool. I didn't realize how passionate you were about wildlife zoo or yeah. zoos in general. That's yeah. really cool, man. Yeah, you you will learn a lot. Well, I feel pretty inspired. Just to fill that tank all the way, I'm gonna go with the and read the inspirational quote that okay. I have furnished. And this is actually it's not by any person mm -hmm. whatsoever. It's by a robot. Okay. Its name is Inspirobot. So it's like a cookie, fortune cookie. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's like a digital fortune cookie. Okay. Basically, you just crack it open, and then it uses AI instead of paper to take some of the wisest words known to man. Really? And just compiles them together for an inspirational quote. I think there's a brother <laughs> named Leroy somewhere <laughs> <laughs> who has conned all you white people. He's like saying the shit he thinks you guys need to hear. <laughs> okay. Well, Be kind to black people. More often. <laughs> that was the quote, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, well, we'll see how good these are. Okay. I, I'll read this quote and you can tell me how, what it means to you or how it speaks to you. This one, it says, we can never keep babysitting, but we can keep preaching. And, mm. and that's all. That's the end of the quote. Mm. Inspire about out. So we can never, ever, well, we can never keep babysitting, but we can keep preaching. That was deep. That was pretty deep. That was deep. I gathered, uh, you can tell somebody what's going to happen. You have to let them let it happen. But you, even though they fall and they, you know, keep bumping their head, you can continue to tell them that what you're doing is wrong. Do not give up on somebody just because they let you down by not following your advice. Okay. That's that's, that's what I gathered from that. That's Yeah, I agree. It made me think of one of your monkey quotes about mm. the, you can <sighs> give it a gun and you can't be upset. See, if somebody had just tuned in and shit and heard that, was like, it made me think of one of your monkey quotes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's not going to be the Instagram clip. I'll say that. <laughs> oh, God. But no, that's pretty good. I mean, we can keep babysitting, but we can't. We can never. We can't keep babysitting, but we can keep preaching. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I can't be there with you all the time, but you know, I can tell you what to do and what not to do. But you're ultimately gonna have to be there. I can't be watching. I can't be in the same house as you all the time. Mm -hmm. I can't be watching you. I'm gonna have to just preach at you via text message or a direct message on Facebook or something. Be like, dude, what the hell are you thinking? Because I've been told I'm real preachy. Really? I, okay. Okay. You know, I, I I tend to give a lot of advice. You know, uh, I like I'm a, I love to believe I'm a straight shooter. I'm not that person you come to for like a sugar coat. Like Fair enough. Person. If I tell you that I liked it, I liked it. If I tell you I did not like it, I will tell you I did not like it. You know, and mm -hmm. if I if you press me, especially with comics who want to know. How did you, what did you think of my, my set? You know, because I get videos all the time. And as a comic, I know how it feels to send my video in. So I watch every video. And wow. The, and the good ones, I get back to them. You know, I get yeah. back to them and be like, hey, even if I don't have something right now, I'll let you know. Please keep following up with me. You know, because nice. I have a lot of nice. people that are trying to get stage time. And I'm, I try to make it as fair as possible. I can't be a black man complaining about equality and then get a uh, uh, a little bit of power and then be like, well, I'm just going to let all the homies ride. No, I, I try to make it as fair. And that's when, when Drake say no friends in the industry. Sometimes it has to be that way to be that way because, yeah, yeah. you know, if you are just about your friends, then you're you're blinded by other real true opportunities and you're just. Like you're limiting yourself. Am, am I? I mean, it's great to work with your friends. It's great in aspect, but it's not great to just be like, I'm just giving my friends these opportunities. You know, I, I saw that. Yeah. I, I saw that yeah. coming into this business, you know, and coming up in comedy out here where it was very clickish. 
I, I, it's always been cliquish. I'm I'm not. Right. A, I, I always said. I mean, shout out to fraternities and everything. I've just never been that one, that person. You know, I'm Same. A, Same. I'm 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 an independent. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent. I refuse to sit up there and be like, well, I completely agree with this, or I I'm, I'm no. If yeah, I I love it. You are. You can never stop preaching. You are preaching to the choir, I feel. Because yeah. I, I feel the same way. It's like I, I never really fit into many cliques as a kid. So then when I grew up, well, it was when I was in high school, I tried to be as inclusive and like try and make sure that other people felt included. Mm -hmm. So And I wanted to be fair as well. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing where I feel like people might take these sides and just because they're on that side, they'll agree with something. That's not true. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, especially in this day and age, people are so polarized mm -hmm. or things, things are so polarizing that people will just attack you if you think one thing that might be different from them. And it's pretty crazy to me because yeah. I, this podcast has been a real blessing for me because I feel like I've been able to speak with so many cool people, yourself included, where it's different perspectives. You have these different life experiences. And when I'm doing my research and like listening to um, stuff that you've been on, I get to try and be in the dapper world. I don't get to dress like you, unfortunately, but it's a, it's a level. It's it, a level. <laughs> that'll be like two or three years before I can get that. It's like 10 years to get on radio and 11 years to be dapper. But, you know, I'm going to shoot for it. That's what I'm going to be. But anyway, I feel like to, to your point, it's I. I uh, I look up to you, and if I get to a point of power that's as high as yours, I would like to be in the same um, shoes or, or do the same things because it's tough. It's not. I'm sure that it's not easy. It is not, and you don't you don't realize that until because I I mean I took the job right when the pandemic when everything opened up. Yeah, last year, yeah. that's when I became the booker. Jesus, right, yeah. right when everything was you know, opening up, everything was, and I, and I remember being, just running shows there at the club, because I had a show, you know, the League of Extraordinary Comedians, yeah, and I was yeah. running a special show, I've been running for the past three years, yeah. you know, that show, yeah. that, so this is before I was a booker, and um, I remember coming into it like, well, how can I help comedy, right, and I, my goal was just to give as many people as many shows as we could. You know, I could easily just keep those spots and just book who I want on Wednesdays and stuff like that and, and just have a bunch of my shows, but I wouldn't be able to see everybody. I wouldn't be, you're going to know people I don't know. You're going to bring people that I don't know and I'll be able to see them. And the more nice. people who have shows, the more opportunities there are for people to get stage time and be able to be seen for however long I'm in this in this chair you know for sure um, for sure because i like i said from people like cedric sabalos and kid and ruben who taught me hey don't be intimidated by someone else's shine someone else's success because that's 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 not how you'll be remembered that's not how you want to be remembered you want to be remembered as someone who actually helped people opposed to someone who was constantly standing in the way. Now, there's people that be like, oh, man, you know, he's standing in the way. That's because they lack that self-awareness to understand why you are holding yourself back. You know, yeah, DAP never holds anybody back. Even people, like I said, I book people who I don't particularly care for, right. you know, personally. I get it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. You're a straight shooter. As, I as get it. As long as the show is good, bro. Trash or treasure, man. Trash or treasure. Okay. If the people laugh, the people laugh. Right. <laughs> oh, good man. Well, I feel inspired. I feel I I did want to also backtrack just one second on mm -hmm. what I thought was an excellent quote as well. Is you don't want to feel like other people. I forgot how you. I'm gonna mangle it, but. Uh, the main gist of it was just because somebody else is shining doesn't mean it's stealing your shine. Mm. And I feel like that's super important because people get caught up, especially with social media and everything where it's easy to compare yourself to it's others. So, it's so stupid to me because I'm like, I've always said to comics out here, look, you should want the next man to blow up. You should want Mike Dapper to blow up. You should want Lamar Mitchell Jr. You should want Terry. You should want all these people to blow up because never in the history of fishing because this is a pond of comedians 
Arizona. Never in the history of fishing has somebody went to a pond, caught a big ass fish, and said, mm, I'm never fishing there again. <laughs> never. There you go. Because Hold. they said, you know what? There's got to be something that's feeding that big fish that made that fish that big. And there's got to be more fish like that in that pond. I'm going back there. Got to be. So comedy is the same way. When somebody blows up from our scene, that light gets brighter on our scene. Yeah. It gets yeah. brighter. And the more people that blow up, the brighter the light gets. And it makes it easier for the next comic. And easier for the next comic because of the light that that other comic has shined on the scene. Mm -hmm. So instead of hating on each other, helping one another, giving each other tags, like that joke was funny. Here's what you should probably say at the end. And not being feeling like, because somebody's giving you a tag that they're trying to say that they know funny. Some of the people, the funniest people aren't the best stage performers, okay? Some of the funniest people just know how to write funny. Right, know where you are, right. know right. where you are, know, know where you are and that self-awareness to be like, hey, look, I don't got that shit on stage that you got, but I know that I could write a joke for you that would be better, and you could sit up there because the biggest stars have a team. They have teams. That's true. You know? And, and this knowing where you are and, and how to be humble enough to be like, hey, man, maybe I'm not cut for this part of the game. I wanted to be in entertainment. I'm not a singer, but I was like, I could be on radio. Yeah. I could be around the yeah. music. Yeah. I could be around the music. That's kind of how I feel right now, to be honest with you. Because stand-up, I love stand-up. I love being around it. I love on the podcast getting people that have been very successful at it. But honestly, I don't know if it's what I want to do. I want to keep flexing those muscles mm -hmm. where I can. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Trash or Treasure is not necessarily stand-up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's a little more improv off-the-cuff type stuff. Yeah. And that's where I feel I'm a little stronger. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to, because you know, Stand-up is kind of like the triceps for me, so I want to make sure that I am not just showing one glamour muscle. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I've got the full the full cut. Yeah. But but at the same time, like you said, play to your strengths. Like recognize your strengths and then play to them. Yep. Because yep. obviously there's some there's some areas of development everywhere. And but... that's that's the key to comedy. Recognizing your strengths. That's why people I think that's why the hate be so strong for certain people. Because they deem mm -hmm. it, they deem some of the things that they do is too easy and effortless. You know, they're like, that's bullshit. How come they're accepting that bullshit? How come he gets to get on stage and wear that ridiculous shit and people don't laugh at him? Like, why yeah. are y'all accepting this bullshit? If I put this bullshit on, then everybody's gonna be like, get, take that whack shit off and then they're gonna <laughs> laugh at me. How come he gets to get away with it? And I'll be like, man, you know, it's because that works for them if you knew what the audience because they know what the audience sees and they're playing into it yeah. you're not recognizing what the audience sees in you and playing off of that and that that frustration of seeing something i can't get up there and tell big people jokes i some a big person tells jokes you know about being big and stuff like that and stares and shit like that and that's like i wish i could tell that and be that easy Right, you know, right. And get that laugh because I'm big and everybody's like, ah, ha, 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 that's easy. Yeah. You know, but I don't yeah. hate on that. I'd be like, oh, okay, that's that lane. Yeah. I stick in my lane, you know, yeah. and knowing your lane will get you in the fast lane a lot faster. Right, right. Absolutely, man. God. Another gallon of wisdom. Beautiful, Mike. Well, we've, oh man, we've been going at it for a bit. So I think we've got time for one question here. This one's from Reddit. It says, yes. I want to help my mom make new friends and I don't know where to start. My mom is 55 years old and today my dad mentioned to me that he thinks she's kind of depressed and lonely. Her and my dad go out pretty often, but something happened between her and her best friend a few years ago and they haven't talked since. She's always been there for me, so I want to try and help her this time. They live in a pretty small town, so there's not many opportunities to meet new people. I was just wondering if anyone had some suggestions. Thanks. A 55-year-old... Le uh, 50 year old, 55 year old lady in a small town needs a hobby oh yeah that's what that's so 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 she did what they're saying is she needs a hobby um agreed 55 years old hey you know what she needs to start exercising <laughs> <laughs> i know it sounds like some whack shit but a lot of people's 
problems that stems with their comfortability with themselves and they're not healthy. You know, mm. when you start to get healthy, you know, you start to feel the confidence like, oh, look at me and stuff like that. And you also get into, you know, a regiment where you're like, OK, well, now I'm working out. I'm there. Now you have things to do. Now you have really some things to do. OK, well, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to walk here. I'm going to go hike here. I'm going to go because now you're looking to get yourself he healthy. So she needs to exercise. If small towns, I'm pretty sure there's there's hills. I'm pretty sure there's places where you can go hike and go exercise because it'll clear your mind. I exercise an hour out the day. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get it, but I do it when my son takes his nap. And um, I run for for four miles on the elliptical. And then I do my multi-gym. By the way, what fabric is are your pants made out of? Uh, they man. just made the smoothest oh, sound. Man. This is that Banana Republic joggers. Oh my god, it yeah. just comforted me so <laughs> much. That was like some <laughs> ASMR type shit. Hey, I was just like, oh. Hey, I found these joggers, man, and I started with one pair, and then it was like I went on stage, and I got so much love, and I saw so many eyeballs on my balls. I was like, you know what? I gotta get another pair, and I was just been falling in love with these these joggers. It's it's Banana Republic. You guys make some some night. Nice, I used to clown Banana Republic and clown dudes, yeah, but yeah. I will say they do make the best pants and jeans. These pants, I believe, Banana are Repub Banana Republic, man, dude. Very comfortable. Bana super comfortable. Very. And they fit me well, too. I'm a taller dude. Y'all got to cut me a check. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, just 20% like off BananaRepublic.com slash ACAP. Hey, so. just like the dude who I make these <laughs> Etsy, who make these on Etsy, I sent him a picture. I was like, yo, bro, you are rocking these completely wrong. Like, this is, <laughs> this is, because he don't even sell this color, this gray. He made this one just for me. I was like, bro, you are making the, you're rocking these completely wrong. This is how you need to do it. But uh, Banana <laughs> Republic, if you look, holla at me, man, you know, and, um, Dude, they look, and by the way, they look very dapper on Thank you. you. You make them look dapper. If I was to wear joggers, they went up like that, I would look like Pinocchio. <laughs> I would look like I just became a real boy. I keep telling people, because I, I used to rock a, a, a belt. I still have it at the house. My world champion of comedy uh, championship belt. And it's oh, real, shit. Yeah, it's real authentic, man. I got pictures. If you look on my uh, Instagram or my Facebook at Mike B. Dapper, you'll see. And I would rock it, and I would just have it on and I wouldn't even mention it. I'd be on stage and I'd just be telling my jokes and I didn't just have a big old belt that says world champion of comedy just right in front of them on some and it's big too, you know. Damn, and it's authentic. Dude. And they'd be like, man, how do you get away with that? And I tell them, you know why? Because just like with an audience on stage, the second you start to feel uncomfortable, then they feel uncomfortable. So if you're walking with so much comfortability in what you have on, then everybody else would be comfortable with it because they'd be like, well, he's so damn comfortable in his skin. Mm. It got to be cool, mm. you know, because you can tell, I can tell when comics wear stuff on stage. Uh, I'm not going to mention their names, but it was a comic <laughs> on stage uh, this past Friday. Um, <laughs> at Improv Mania. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. DBG. And, uh, he runs a show. October 6th at the House of Comedy, Daniel Bridge guy. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a tight ass shirt on, right? And, uh -huh. and, and, and as a person who knows what it feels like to have a shirt that might just be a little bit too tight yeah. on stage, you feel that in your stage, your performance. When you're comfortable with your outfit on stage, it really comes off in your performance. So when you're... Good. When Great you, point. When you have an outfit that you're, you're just not, like, not comfortable, but you're like, I want to wear it, it comes off in your performance. It really does. So, like, that's a beautiful point. Yeah. Damn, dude. Oh, you got to just be comfortable in it. You got to, some nights I'll be so comfortable in the outfit, I'll be like, bam. But the other nights I'll be like, I'm, I'm going to try to be different. Like, I, I fell in love with Andre Three Stacks years ago when I was a nice, kid. Nice. Nice. And I was like, man, I just love how different he is. And every season I try to come with something different. Just like how he would, every okay. album they would come. So it'd be like, a couple of years, you know, a year ago or so, I was into my African apparel and stuff like that. I had yeah. people be like, man, he's rocking a cool ass daishiki. And I was like, yeah, I had daishiki. What's a daishiki? A daishiki is an African garment that, uh, like a shirt, and it's very colorful and stuff like that. Oh, I think I've seen it. And they've got those cool, do they have the little. Yeah. Um, yeah, the they're made in different neck? design, different designs, but. Okay. They're, they're very 
African colors and stuff like that and designs. And I was rocking those for a while. And everybody was like, man, that's cool as shit. You know, and, it's, and then I just stopped because that was that season. That's cool, dude. I, you know, I was feeling Italian last year, so I would just wear my uniform for Olive Garden. <laughs> but <laughs> then I got fired, so I had to stop. I but, thought you were going to come with some cool Jason Statham <laughs> suits yeah. and shit. Like, oh, okay, I feel you, bro. Italian suits is nice. I can't afford the shit, but that's cool. <laughs> uh, you know, I can actually do a Jason Statham impression. Oh, work. Oh, all right. What, I, what would you like me to say? Um, Oi. What's your name? Hey, I, give, I, give, I, I, I give it to you. I, give, I did not think he was going to do it. I, 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 yeah. Oh, man. I practiced I, for hours before. No, I'm kidding. I, I, I heard it was a comedian, Jonathan Kite, uh -huh. and he was doing the impression. And I was like, I didn't know. you. Uh, there's some... There are just some people that I feel like, no, they just sound so normal. Uh -huh. But then it came to me, I was like, yeah, Jason Statham's pretty strange in uh -huh. terms of how he sounds. Yeah, he so is. That's, I, I don't know if I can say much, except for like, hi, would you like a towel? <laughs> oh, we're the comedy advice podcast <laughs> no you pulled that shit off it makes me want to go watch one of his movies I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna go home and watch the Meg <laughs> oh, yes yes dude there was, um, the only other one I could do is Owen Wilson oh and, yeah uh, I, I, when I had the hair I was like hey it's Owen Wilson everybody how are you doing <laughs> like, do you like dogs I love dogs I was in a movie with a dog Marley and me wow <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. I wish I had some impressions in me. Uh, I, I wish. That's solid. That's, uh, solid. I, you, that's what I say. That's, it's, it's a gift. Some Like I said, some comics can get in that lane. Like uh, uh, Pharaoh. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He'll sit up there yeah. and jump in there. And, and it's like, man, you'll sit back and be like, man, that is, that is just a talent. You know? Dude. God Godfrey? God, I, Holy hey, shit, Next man. week, speaking of uh, September 23rd through the 26th, I will be uh, emceeing that show at the House of Comedy. Godfrey. Like, I, it's funny because I don't... Before I was the booker, I used to be there every five weeks. They had me in there, you know, mm -hmm, emceeing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm the booker. I don't... I'm not a... I don't... Well, you would think I'd be there more and getting more stage time. Yeah. I'm on my Magic Johnson, so I try not to... Try not to be Kobe. Yeah, try not to be Kobe. Well, I mean, even that's my guy he's... too. That's my guy. Yeah. R.I.P. I got I, yeah. man, my man cave. You know, it's special. It got you know some Kobe. Nice, stuff it, it's... nice, dude. Nice. I always, <clears throat> I lived in Italy for a little while, and I didn't of course. fucking know. Yeah, <laughs> I was working at the Olive Garden of in Rome, course. and uh, <laughs> and yeah. my cousins they're from Italy, and they were like, "Yeah, Kobe, he is fluent in Italian. He uh -huh. was over here for." I don't know how long, but he was playing basketball over there. And he's like, I remember in the Olympics, there was the Italian ref. And uh, he was just, he said something. And Kobe was like, ma va fangulo, ma che cazzo stai facendo? Like, <laughs> perfect Italian. <laughs> and I was just floored. And I was like, man, I, I, I was at the point where I was letting other people shine, get in my way. And I was like, fuck you, Kobe. I want to be, <laughs> you're so good. It's He did a rap, he did a song. And, uh, and I believe he was rapping in Italian. Oh, of yeah. course he was. Of course yeah. he was. Yeah. Damn. We never heard. Like, I I believe it was like Tyra Banks or something on it. Like, he was, it was back <laughs> oh, in the day. Shit. It was back in the day. Don't quote me, y'all. I don't want people to be like, you ain't no damn fan. <laughs> on uh, don't quote me. Don't We're going to do the me. fact check afterwards. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. But, uh, dude, Mike, it was such a blast to have I you have on. Fun, man. Thank you so much. What, where can people find you? What have you got going on? Uh, this weekend, uh, the 19th, uh, I have the Laugh Out Cash Out show. It was the first one. Oh, nice. It's the first one. It's $5 to get in. Like, literally $5 to get in. I made it dirt cheap because um, I want to be able to... It's weird because people don't like to tip mm. comics. It, or they're uncomfortable doing it. No one tips a comic. No one says... Hey, you were hilarious. Here you go. Huh. Like it's weird, you know. People tip people who serve drinks and stuff like that, and they didn't go in the back and make no drink. You know, what no waitress in the back like all day at home. Like, okay, I'm gonna mix a little Coca Cola with a little Dr Pepper and <laughs> add three drops of Sprite. They gonna love this shit. Like no <laughs> one does that. And, you know, they just go from the back with the Sprite to the to the front of the room, and they're like, here you go. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and people be like, true. here's a tip. 
but here I am sitting up here trying to write this masterful joke that's about to make you laugh your ass off and pee your pants, and you're like, thank you, and walk out. So the Laugh Out Cash Out, I like a lot of comics to put their they cash app and their Venmos up on stage, and during their performance, if people think they're funny, they can send them a tip. Dude, you know? I love that. You know, I so love that. If everybody tips at least a dollar, then every the comics can, you know, if we got a good crowd, everybody can, you know, walk away. And and if you they're only paying five dollars to get in, it, it's a win win. If the comics earn a bigger tip, then hey, tip them bigger. But this is your opportunity to let comics feel a little bit more like that that gratitude. Like, oh, oh man, great. you know, that yeah. gratitude of I did I had a good performance and this is what they thought of it. Yeah. They're putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah. Their mouth so where their money September is. 19th at the House of Comedy, Laugh Out, Cash Out. And September 23rd through the 26th, I am uh, emceeing that weekend for Godfrey. He will be out here. And, oh, hell yes. Yeah. It, it is, I've been trying to work with Godfrey. He's been out here quite a few times, but I haven't been able to work with him. Be, and it's crazy because I'm the booker. But yeah, yeah, i finally been able to work this and finagle my way into working with Godfrey. And <laughs> as an African, I um, always admired him as a comedian, yeah, yeah. you know, and his background and my background. Uh, it's it's going to be fun. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, congrats. Well, I don't know if this episode's going to make it out in time, but I will. I, I haven't done a comedy advice podcast prime. It's mm. more like ground Mm. shipping so gonna be it, like, it's gonna be like thanksgiving and shit They're so it'll like, be yeah what 20, is, who are you talking about it probably was real funny was, 2022 but uh <laughs> no no but I'll, I'll be sure to share all that stuff on my instagram page okay. and stuff so people will get the word out and uh people follow will go me to the on show. instagram yeah see the babies playing with tigers and shit toad peppermint mm -hmm. and that's the episode my treasures i hope you guys had an amazing time please follow mike support him see his shows and also support me if you haven't yet subscribed leave a review come see me live at the house of comedy the 9th of november and also off the top improv mania chandler on the 12th if i didn't say that already and that's all you guys are awesome big old hug handshake we're gonna keep it professional now nope, going to the gooch smooch mm -hmm. love you guys <laughs>